You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you've been on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tennis Ace June's Path. So, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes of entertaining you. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> no. You know what? What about how about a little test? I'm sure this one will be really easy for you since you obviously already know so much. Answer me this. Where do the gods of the Greek pantheon reside? Uh... June is stuttering, unable to respond. He's shooting me a pleading look. The teacher isn't really looking at me right now. <laughs> oh, goodness. Ugh. Ow. Wait, hold up. There we go. Mount Olympus! She may sense a face, she may sense his face go slack, staring at the tiger with a look of complete shock. Then he cracks a content smile, seemingly incredibly pleased at this turn of events. What a pleasant surprise. I suppose there is hope for you, after all. Thank you! Shima-sensei makes a small reverence to Jun and restarts his lecture. And thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Alright, but that still doesn't mean you get away with not paying attention. Cut the chatter, you two. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank God it's already lunch break. Sheesh, spacing out like this is not okay. You should try being a little more attentive from now on. Nah. All right, class, I want, you all to I want you all to review some of what I've explained to you, because this will certainly be a part of our midterms. Just make sure you study and you should all do well. Shima-sensei walks out of the class as the students start getting up. Some people start leaving the class whilst others just sit and chat, bringing out their lunchboxes. We're finally back to having a cool, relaxed atmosphere. Hey, Yuichi-san, mind if we eat together? You seriously don't need to ask that every time. Sure, take a seat. I think Saya and Shuichi should arrive in a bit. As if they were on cue, the door to her class is violently opened by a super high-strung Saya as she and Shuichi walk inside. Yo! Yo! Ah! I survived! Saya plops herself down on a chair without bothering to say anything else, immediately slatching on her desk. Rough day? Saya nods, her head buried in her arms. As Shuichi pulls up a chair to sit down, she lets out a guttural groan. Really rough day, then. Sai looks up at us with sadness. I was late to class this morning, and Katsuragi said they chewed me out. She forced me to stand outside of class holding two buckets full of water. Who even does that anyway? What is this, a shounen manga? Well, she is very old-fashioned, so I'm not really surprised. If that happened today? You tend to always be on time. That's, like, the only good thing about you. Watch it, Arata! <laughs> Sai leers at Shuichi, making him grin, making him grin. One second, y'all. I got to plug this thing in. It's dying. Oh, no. Okay, almost there. Got it. Okay. We're all good to go. All right. It seems this is exactly the reaction he was hoping to get out of her. I got into some trouble on my way to school and got held up. Where? In, in the police station. You got held up at a police station? The first thing you mentioned was being late to class? I don't want to remember it, okay? Saya buries her face in her arms again and groans another time. By this point, Saya has already been so loud that everyone in the surrounding seats is staring at us. Class rep walks up, walks up to us to check on the source of the commotion. Hey, saya chan Boy troubles? I can get Kyoko. Go get Kyoko if you want. She smiles warmly at Saya, who merely looks up with downcast eyes. No. No. I wish it were boy troubles. Ms. Liguchi-san got, 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 got in trouble with the police. Saya nearly jumps up from her seat. Kobayashi-kun! What? June seems to be completely oblivious to what just happened. My, my. My, my. In trouble with the police, Saya-chan. What did you do? If the class rep was at all bothered by it, she didn't show the slightest, the smallest trace of it. Instead, her eyes betrayed nothing. Ugh, foxes. I can never read them. It's stupid. I, I might have been bro- I might have broken someone's phone. Wow. Even Shuichi is taken aback by her sudden confession. My, my. That's very violent, even for you, Saya-chan. Yeah, well, it was a misunderstanding. Care to walk us through what happened? Well... Sai glances over towards us, expecting for one of us to interject and change the subject. When one of us does, she sighs. I took the train to school like I usually do every morning. I ended up sitting in front of a boy from another school and an old man. I was just... Oh, excuse me. I was just minding my own business. Listening to, uh, listening to some music on my phone when I thought I heard the man sound of a camera. I looked around and saw him holding up his phone. I thought he was taking pictures of me and... Wait, wait. Who did you see holding up the phone, the boy or the old man? What difference does it make? Well, if it was a kid taking pictures of you, the best you could do is ask for his school to take disciplinary action. If it was an adult, on the other hand, you could file charges against. Sai seems to ponder on this for a few seconds before sighing once more. 
Well, none of it matters anyway. I took the phone out of his hand and smashed it on the floor. He got really pissed. <sighs> oh, God. Sigh, uh... Wait, who got really... The boy! June cowers in his chair. Saya clears her throat. Anyway, he called the police once we stopped in the next station, and we got taken to the police department where they questioned me about it. I explained what happened, and they called my mother, saying I couldn't just destroy personal property willy-nilly. Wow, and they didn't say anything about him taking pictures of you? Well, I have a bad feeling about this. Turns out he wasn't taking pictures of me. His phone didn't even have a camera. I knew it. <laughs> It seems that this story was too much for Shuichi to take as he explodes in a fit of thunderous laughter. June and Classrat both pat her on the back, trying to reassure her. That was an honest mistake, Saya-chan. Just try not to jump to conclusions next time. I had to give him a new phone! My mom was pissed! She'll take my next paycheck to cover the cost of the phone as punishment! It's not fair! My paycheck is twice the price of that shitty phone! You seem to care more about your paycheck than you do his phone. Well, why should I have to buy him a new phone? Because you broke his. That's his fault for taking pictures of me! Except he didn't. God! June gives Saya a short pat on the shoulder. Well, I guess nothing terribly bad happened then. If you'll excuse me, Kyoku is giving me the evil eye for ditching her to come over. See ya! Thank you, thank you, Aya-chan. Ayoko, Ayako nods, smiling. She wasn't kidding. Kyoku really is glaring at us. That girl can be really scary when she's annoyed. Sometimes I wish I had a female best friend. Saya sighs, resting her chin on her hand and pouting. So do I. Before I have time to react, Saya reaches into my lunchbox, grabbing a piece of meat and throwing it at Shuichi, who ducks out of the way. My tuna! Saya reaches towards my lunchbox again, but I quickly snatch it away, holding it up in the air away from her. June then gets up and steals a piece from it. Thanks! Hey! Hey, don't you know it's disrespectful to waste food like this? Junichiro's towering figure appears behind Saya and scolds her. S sorry Saya glares at Chuichi, who's on the edge of roll falling on the floor, falling to the floor in a fit of laughter. And leave my food alone for crying out loud! I shout an annoyed look at June. I shoot an annoyed look at June. Shout! I shout a look. Hmm, it's really good. He's taunting me now. I relent, sighing. I'm glad you think so. Hey, let me try some too. I quickly whisk my lunchbox away. Chuichi reaches for it. Relax, I'm just kidding. Hey, by the way. June points his chopsticks at us with his mouth so comically full of food that I can see his cheeks bulging. It takes a few long bites before swallowing. Did you guys see how they announced a new game for the Monster Tamer series? It's been over three years since the last one. Oh yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of that series. Yuichi hates it though. Huh? Why would you hate Manta? Gee, thanks a lot, Yuichi. That dinosaur pushed me out of the mountain, okay? Dinosaur? There are no dinosaurs in Monster Tamer. I think he's talking about the EBM Slitheros. He looks like a dinosaur. I jump from my chair in surprise. Ryoji walks up to us, still absentmindedly eating his sandwich. Oh yeah, that one. I never, I've never successfully hunted him before. Sai leans over to June. What's an EBM? June opens his mouth to answer, but is quickly cut off by Kumagawa, who is now staring intently at Saya. It stands for Elite Boss Monster, but the main objectives in Monster Tamer. You have to find them and study them to discover what they do and don't and don't what they do and don't like, so you can successfully tame them. Something us tamers affectionately call hunting. Yeah, that. I'm surprised you know about all this stuff, Junkun. I've never seen you carrying a portable around. I used to borrow my former roommate's console. It's one of the reasons I'm so sad about the new announcement, too. The new game is only for home consoles, so I can't easily borrow someone else's. I told you yesterday you could borrow mine. Yeah, but I didn't want to assume. Assume what? That I meant it? In that case, it's alright to assume. S sorry Well, you wish you sent... Well, when can I go to your place to get it, then? Why don't you come to my house after class? I can give it to you so you can take it home, then. Uh, you might want to take it to his house yourself. Suichi chimes in, talking talking over a raised eyebrow. Why? Well... He shoots a glance at June, who just looks back and forth between the two of us with a curious look. One second, y'all. I immediately get the message. Ah, you're right. Do not trust June with important cargo. Huh? He shoots us both a quizzical look that we mostly ignore, pretending not to notice. Let's drop by my place and I'll walk you to your house with a console. Why? You're just gonna have more trouble that way. It's no trouble, really. But... What are your plans for today? Both of our courts are still closed down until the end of the day. So suppose you guys will have to do something else, right? Shuichi, nice save! Uh, this conversation doesn't interest me anymore. Bye! Well, he sure is blunt. To be honest, I was thinking of renting a private court for the day and practicing my basics. That's actually a great idea. I'd tag along, but I've already booked a shift for today after class. 
God knows I need the money right now. Hey, why don't you take Arushihara along? He could help you practice. That's an idea. Oh, that's a great idea. You two could play a match against each other. Now, now, let's not be too hasty. You know that's what he'd want you to do. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Why don't you Why don't you want to play against Case Case san When I had almost forgotten that June was here, he suddenly chimes in. Well, it's just that his playstyle is really annoying. And playing against him is infuriating. Yeah, I'm... Playing against him is infuriating. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the idea. You know, it wouldn't be so bad if you actually had a basic grasp on any strategy other than bang ball really powerful other side. <laughs> okay, first of all, I don't sound like that. Second of all, shut up! You see, this is your problem. Arushihara is probably the player most familiar, most similar to Tanabe in all of Japan. You should be getting as many matches with him as you can to try and practice against that specific type of player, but instead you just bitch around about how annoying it is. Whoa, Shuichi, I thought we'd agree to be gentle when we confronted him on this. Oh, I am being gentle. I have quite a few choice expletives I've decided not to use in this occasion. Saya mumbles a wow under her breath, looking away from Shuichi. Well... What? No witty response this time? Seriously, Yuichi. I know this bothers you, but you have to stop doing that. Every time something becomes remotely hard, you start looking for an excuse to run away. What? That's not true. I've never run away from tennis. No, instead you just quit the high-profile club you used to practice in, rejected all the private coaching offers you received, cut ties with all of your sponsors, and won't accept any requests from high-ranking from other high-ranking players to practice. Are you really happy just wasting away your talents in a second-ranked tennis club when you know you could do better? Hey! Oh, shut up, it's true! Saya grumbles something under her breath, but the only word of it I managed to catch is a curse word that I'm not too comfortable repeating. How long have you felt this way? For a long time already. Ever since you fell to the number two ranking and started doing this crap. Instead of doing your best to catch up, you're just lagging behind and letting other rivals catch up to you. You used to be untouchable. Japan's rising star, the biggest hope for Japanese tennis. Then you lose a couple times to a really tough rival and decide to shut yourself off? Look, I'm sorry if I'm being curt with you, but I've been holding a lot of this in for a while. I've tried being patient with you, hoping you'd find your way again, but you just keep repeating the same bullshit over and over again. I thought after that conversation we had a few weeks ago that you'd finally start to change. I thought you were getting there, for af getting there after Morisaki showed up to practice with you. And yet you're here making excuses again. Look around the table. Sai's face is contorted in a complicated expression. June is a million miles away, looking off into the distance, perturbed by our sudden argument. Do you think so, too? I look Sai in the eye and ask her. She struggles to hold my gaze, eventually looking down at the floor. Yes, Coach and I have been trying to motivate you since you first joined the school. We thought about getting more. We thought getting Morisaki and a few other low-ranking pros over here would help motivate you, and it seemed to have. You improved a lot in that week they spent here. It's been years since I've seen you playing that way. And then as soon as they were gone, you just started doing the same thing again. So you knew Coach was going to do that. You planned it with him, and you pretended to be surprised about it. Yeah, kinda. I see. I put the lid back on my lunchbox and get up from the desk. Yuichi, wait! I just want to be alone right now, okay? I turn around and leave the classroom. No one follows me. The warm spring air is comfortable. A quiet breeze ruffles through my fur every now and again. I'm just sitting on the floor, looking up at the clouds as they pass by. Even though the sky is so clear, my mood right now is tempestuous. The sound of the door wakes me up from my gaze. I guess I've been lost in thought for a while. This can't be a teacher. Lunch break ended a few minutes ago. Everyone should be in their classes right now. Shuichi, then? I hear the sound of footsteps. No, it can't be Shuichi. He knows I like to hide behind the vent. He'd have come straight here. Whoever it is, this person is wandering around, as if looking for something. Ah! I instantly recognize that voice. I look to my side and I see June looking over at me with worry. He freezes in his spot for a couple of seconds before finally taking a few slow, ste slow steps towards me. What are you doing here? You should be in class. I look away. Yeah, well, so should you. June sits down on the floor next to me, turning to look at the sky as I am doing. I don't really feel like going to class right now. I get the feeling I just space out for the rest of the day. We sit in silence for a couple of minutes. I glance at June's profile every now and then and I see him with a complicated look on his face, struggling to find words. Eventually he manages to find them. I... I don't really know what's been going on. I haven't known you guys that long. I get the feeling that that's not the kind of discussion you should have ha should have had in front of an outsider like me. You're not an outs... I am. That's not what I came here to talk to you about. June sighs, staring at his feet with pursed lips. I don't even know what I want to talk to you about. I, I didn't really think this through. I just got the feeling that I needed to say something. I thought, maybe you'd come to me when I saw you. <sighs> Look at me, I'm rambling. Sorry, June, I'm not in a very good mood right now. Could you get to the point... 
I don't really understand the argument you guys were having, but it seems serious. I guess, I guess it just doesn't sit well with me. I can sort of understand. They basically said you haven't been working your best lately, and I can see how that'd be upsetting, but is it really that bad? I look over at June again, expecting to see a contemptuous look on his face. Instead, all I see is curiosity and worry. Damn it, he's too pure. I, I don't really talk much about it nowadays. What Chuichi said is true. Up until middle school, I used to be known as the number one player in my age group. Even then, sports critics were already labeling me the next Japanese star. I had countless practice partners from all over the country, a multitude of coaches wanting to work with me, tons of companies wanting to sponsor me. I had everything. I saw the particular rival, Takagi Tanabe. Back then, he was only the sixth in the national rank. He was climbing fast. We had met for the first time a year before when we played each other for the first time. It was a lopsided win for me. Then we met again in the next tournament, and it wasn't as easy. I got the win, but it was difficult, and I got really happy about it. All the other players in my age group weren't nearly in the same level as me. And that's a horrible thing to say, but it's true. I had gone undefeated for over four years. Eventually, I got in touch with Takagi, and we started a friendly rivalry. Takagi from the south and Michimaya from the north. It was just like the sort of thing you'd seen in a shonen manga. You have no idea how happy I was. We talked to each other frequently, share details about our training schedule, and eventually talk about our personal lives. He was my first tennis friend in a long time. But what about Mizuguchi-san? Can't help but smile a little bit. Sai is nice, but she's a girl. We don't play in the same category, so there's no sense of rivalry between us. It's just not the same. Anyway, back then, I got used to all the attention. I got used to being called the best, and eventually I led myself to believe the same. I thought I was the best player in Japan, and that no one could ever get in my way. During the U15 National Tournament in my second year, I got matched up with Takagi again. I think that was our fourth or fifth match. I don't quite remember. I was feeling a little bit nervous, because every time I played against him, he seemed to be so much better than the previous time. Alright guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!